of Rochester, St. John Fisher, Nazareth, and um, St. John Fisher had very good two openings a year back. But, so you did apply? I did. Okay. Probably I didn't come into the B list, well, one the of the A list, whatever they call it, uh, because I didn't have a teaching experience. That's how they go and recruit. I didn't even get a response from them. Well, I would, uh, what Steve said about uh, substitute teaching is kind of like being an adjunct. Uh, had you considered becoming an adjunct at any college? I did, but when I saw the opening, I did apply. Well, uh, I think the perseverance is to, you know, just not send in the, the resume, but to follow it up with a phone call, to actually uh, schedule an interview with the chairperson, uh, to be aggressive. Uh, because the bottom line is that um, it's very difficult for us to ignore a piece of paper. It's less easy to, to ignore a person. Uh, BOCES, I would actually recommend that you call BOCES, and I don't know if you live on the east side or the west side. Okay, so call the BOCES uh, number one over in Fairport and ask someone there to assess your transcript. Chances are good, you probably only need student teaching and uh, like foundations of education, and maybe a foreign language. Uh, you're probably very close to being certified. Um, in New York State, how many days can they teach as a substitute without certification? Uh, 120. Okay, so you could only teach as a substitute for a minimum of, or a maximum of 120 days. So it really would be to your best interest to have BOCES look at your resume or look at your transcript and make suggestions. Steve? I'm sorry. Well, I, it's easy because I'll just continue with what Janet's track was. Um, Quite frankly, and just being very matter of fact and blunt, the, the certification is the be all and end all in order to teach in a New York State public school. Uh, that's a requirement. Uh, no child left behind re requires that. Uh, st state certification requirements require that. We could not consider you for a permanent probationary teaching uh, appointment without the certification. But having said that, uh, a couple of things that Janet mentioned are, are spot on. Uh, your degree would lend itself toward the content area where you would just probably need the education courses. You would need to be student teach, you would need to student teach, which could potentially be accomplished also through substitute teaching. You'd have to contact the BOCES certification officer uh, to assist you with, with that kind of thing because she is the state education department's certification officer for our region. Uh, so, and I don't I, don't, I know a lot about it, but I don't know enough because it, it really is individual. She would review the transcript, say you would be shy this, this is the areas you would need, uh, this is how many days you would need to substitute in order for it to count for student teaching. But you are quite correct, if I were to come across your resume, I could not consider it for a teaching position. I could only consider it for a support staff or a substitute. No, actually taking your like your report card, if yeah. you will, your college report card, to the lady at BOCES, writing a check to her for like $125. I have gone through that process with some private agency, so that's all Well, care. private agency isn't uh, SUNY or BOCES, and I don't mean to but be... Then I've then furthermore, through the New York State, that's also, they also accepted all what was done. New York, New York State Education Department, they have clarified, they have given me limited licensure. That's what it is for us. Well, I have to be honest then, um, this really does exceed my level of expertise. And my, my next uh, recommendation would be to uh, perhaps contact someone in state ed and, and try to get them to put in a letter specifically what you need, because I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of like out of suggestions. I, I, I couldn't emphasize, I, I think Janet's route is the route to go. Irrespective of anybody else's help, I would contact the BOCES certification officer. 
she would be the person that would be able to give you the most help mm -hmm. with respect to where you're at now and what you would need to do going forward. Perfect. Do you have a master's so degree? The, I have two yeah, degrees. sure. Uh, without question, I know that MCC, we like to hire uh, experts or teachers. Experts in skill areas and teachers in uh, like the humanities. So without question, depending upon what your background is in terms of engineering, yeah, we have a whole HVAC and also, uh, STEM, uh, physics, all sorts of programs. Yeah. Have you ever been an adjunct before? I have been an adjunct. Um, what I notice is that the um, community colleges frequently have openings that they're publicizing. And um, the only thing that I saw that I thought would be kind of a challenge is sometimes, and I don't think this is true of MCC, but somewhere out there they were asking for a philosophy of teaching. Oh, wow. So you have to you know, express yourself and your interest, which um, with some thoughtfulness I think uh, anyone who has passion for teaching could do. So that may be the only thing that stands in the way because um, you sound as though you have the background and Janet is confirming it that, um, you know, would work. Yeah, I, I have applied at some, there are, there are certainly a limited number of adjunct jobs that are posted like an MCT and I've applied for mm -hmm. but I've heard it to be so maybe, maybe the question is, how do you apply for adjunct jobs that maybe aren't posted? Yeah, I have a commentary on the posting process. Um, you haven't heard from me at all that you should be dealing with job boards, and that's because I don't believe in them. I, I don't think the electronic means of finding someone is helpful very much to the employer or the employee, but we're kind of stuck with it. What I promote is you need to be known by the folks that you want to work with. So, and that's the, that's the arena we're moving into. I, I uh, know of a, an executive recruiter who actually, and his name is on the, um, the sheet that I gave you, Greg Taylor, used to do executive recruiting. And because LinkedIn now and all the other means of networking are helping people find jobs, he's kind of shifted to become the LinkedIn expert. Um, and, and most people who are doing career counseling are saying that job boards have a probab some probability of helping you find a job, but it's a low probability. So you really need to be networking and you need to be connecting and joining and moving because you want to be in a position when, when something comes up, people think, oh, I know who this person is. I just met them last week or they sent me and they were in the paper, they wrote an essay on the topic or something. So you get identified in a different way. Um, if I could just ask a clarifying question before we go back, we've, we've mentioned the word adjunct a couple of times, and that may be a term that not everyone's familiar with. So could we define that a little bit? What do you mean by adjunct in higher education, adjunct professor? You're typically teaching uh, one uh, course or two. Um, it's a part-time position. Um, you have a master's degree or, as Janet said, an area of expertise that is um, technical. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain pay range for it. It's not uh, tenured. Mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, and uh, basically, as Steve would say, it's per diem. It's uh, as necessary. It's dependent upon enrollment. Uh, the reality is that it's uh, it's more easy to hire an adjunct person because we don't have to pay them benefits. And um, uh, on the students, it's uh, somewhat unfair because you're not required to uh, keep office hours. So it's. It's beneficial to, to each party differently. Uh, ultimately, again, I have to be honest with you, um, some adjuncts are viewed as substitutes and they never get hired because there must be a reason. Uh, however, what's your alma mater? Would you, is it close by? Well, I have a master's degree from RIT. And well, I, I'd be knocking on their door and just say, hey, listen, you know, I've got this degree that I got from you guys and is there an opportunity for me to use it? Uh, let them, you know, say no to you. Again, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of, um, I've heard the word no once or twice in my life, so if I hear it once more, it's, it's not a big deal. <laughs> I might also mention, uh, you, you talked about MCC specifically, and I don't want to talk about the competition, but it oh, isn't, because no, 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 it, right. it isn't really the right. competition. GCC, FLCC. GCC and FLCC, uh -huh. exactly where I was going. In a lot of cases, those uh, places have satellite uh -huh. uh, oh, branches uh, in multiple areas that, 
it's difficult for them to staff, but for their outreach type of programs, like I know GC, I live in Genesee County, so I know GCC uh, has about five different locations where they have campus courses right. available. And uh, you know, to be honest with you, I was even thinking about maybe doing that myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll I, can I can I just can mm -hmm. I repeat the question just so we get it in here? Yeah. So um, our questioner has been a technical trainer and is has noticed that the trend in training is more towards computer training these days, and is wondering how she might develop those skills. Okay. Well, I said earlier that I had to do my homework on what I put on the handout, so I'm not an expert in the. Um, I am not a practitioner in this. Um, but I have a good example of somebody who succeeded in this, and they happen to be one of the officers of ASTD. Um, a colleague of mine wanted to do the very same thing. She didn't have a technical back background like you do, but she wanted to move into being able to author programs and all that. So she got a project that forced her to learn a piece of software, and then the doors opened. She became associated with, you know, this person knows how to, de how to develop training, author training on this piece of software, and she made it work for her. So it's a pretty, I think that's a pretty proven technique. And again, it, it brings down the level of risk that people feel when they don't know what you, you know, when you don't have something uh, that they're looking for. And it gets you into the club um, if they are. So, so she got a project to a company or did she sort of put it on herself? It was an independent contract, which is another, you know, we've talked about ways to get your foot in the door, but independent contract and getting a project that makes you, that does two things, that provides you some level of, let's face it, on-the-job training. If you don't know the software, but you've got to know it to create the product, you somehow managed to do that. And um, I think it's another door opener. There are also, at RIT, as, a, as one school used to offer, and I think still does courses in instructional design. Right, right. That might be something. And in fact, when I was trying to make the change from, uh, I was in purchasing at the U of R, and I wanted to be in training. I took, a, I, it, and I had a master's already, and I thought, how am I going to do this? So I took a couple courses in the IT program at, um, at uh, RIT so that I could get the language and I could move with different cir in different circles, and then I, I got a job after that at Kodak. One fingerprinting is enough. We'll transfer. It'll be on what they call your teach website, uh, and it'll be transfer. We'll have access to that. Uh, for support staff folks, because they're hourly employees, we've made the decision we'll pay for the fingerprinting. Uh, actually, the individual uh, pays for that, and they uh, complete a voucher, and we reimburse them. For our professional certificated uh, uh, pro, uh, applicants, it's actually done before we even see them. It's usually done at the college level uh, or upon there. In order to earn certification, they have to have it done, so that's already completed. But it, it does transfer. Uh, the only ones would be those of us dinosaurs that have been with the same district um, and haven't been fingerprinted, at least educationally speaking. And um, <laughs> do you want to go into that? I should have said, I said, not, not, not. Uh, but then, um, uh, if, if I were to let's say relocate to another district, I would need to be fingerprinted for that purpose. It's valid for as long as you are certificated. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Pistol permit. I've been fingerprinted many, many years ago. Um, that was not applicable to this. So, it, without being totally uh, expert on that, my my sense is no, that would not be applicable. I know for a fact. Just to help Steve out, I know for a fact it's a completely separate database. Right. Criminal uh, criminal background is completely separate. And even though you think it should mesh, it doesn't. Well, it wasn't a criminal. No, no, it, no. It, it's, if it's not. <laughs> oh, no, that, that's why I qualified it too. Me, me either. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say if it's not the SUNY, if it's not the uh, state ad site, it's not there. Right. right.
When I was hiring, I would say we weren't hiring entry level. We were hiring, you know, uh, five years experience sounds very familiar. But if I were in a position where I wanted to demonstrate that and didn't feel like I had the background, um, and I'm and uh, Janet may know more about this than I do, but I have seen, um, for instance, postings uh, for MCC to get contract trainers to come on board. Um, so you know, if you can put together um, background, it doesn't have to be um, <coughs> full-time employment. But if you can again make the bridge for the person who's deciding. Um, with experience that you've either volunteered or you've done per diem or something like that, you can make the case that you have the experience. Having said that, there's a little problem in hiring if, you know, if the poster has said I, what's required is a master's degree or whatever, and they do not hire to that, there are, uh, ch there are opportunities for charges of discrimination. So. That's why people are so, one of the reasons people are so careful with both creating the posting to allow for the right background but not limiting the field. But once it's out there, they're really obligated from a legal standpoint to hire to that. 